Last week on the season. I'm really trying hard this year, and I'm, I'm harping on our staff each week to enjoy the journey. Man, somebody should have told us when we were born that it goes really, really fast. And man, if you're always chasing the car, you, you never catch up. Have to be physical on the perimeter. We can't, we can't line up and play off like this and give him his big window. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I can throw it to that. I'm ready to jot down some notes, man. Oh, yeah. He's going to get with it. If it be 21 oh man, and it's on the season. You got to have sway. If you don't have sway, you can't play this position. Virgil, back to throw, pressure up the middle, fires deep, picked off at the 38-yard line. Nice little win. But it's for real next week. We're going to uh, Tuscaloosa this weekend. Um, uh, there's a show going down. If you want to come, everybody's invited, everybody's welcome. I'll be there. Sure, we walk through them at the hotel. We'll have an extensive walkthrough on game day since the kickoffs at eight. All right, let's hit some film here. All right, stretch right here. Rob, put this on for you. This is how you come out of your hips low, pad level, attack. He's knocking this guard straight back. That's team run defense right there. Attack the outside shoulder of him, push him back, get the quarterback pulled up. That's how you affect the play. All of this stuff is the same this year. They're just running out different personnel. That's what it's going to look like on Saturday night. That is what it's going to look like. Finish, finish, finish. Look, we've had a great week so far. Continue it. Continue it. We're on the road tomorrow. We're in the hotel, and it's here. We're going to have lots of walkthroughs and tips and reminders, and then it's going to be about you guys Saturday night. Let's go. Nobody late. we got 25 minutes. 25 minutes. like that good old grill food. Man, the chocos even smell good, you know what I mean? By time, man. I told y'all I would've didn't know what he was doing, man. That for a bench started, bro. Okay. So you fold under press those you telling me? Man, no, nah, I ain't folding. You can let all the people you want, you can let them make jokes and all that good stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> let them make jokes, it's okay. It's yeah, okay. Right. What it make you want to... They're gonna be the first one to get the piece. I don't know, I guess I can compare it to like, let's take mothers for instance. You know how like when a baby whines, they like, oh, he hungry or she hungry. He or she needs to, a diaper change or something like that. It's just something that you know when you a cook. And when you a cook, you can look at it, you can smell it and all that good stuff, you know what I mean? And you already know if it's ready to eat or not. Oh, ain't no mistakes. You look good now, though. You know you know what you're doing. I know I know what I'm doing, baby. If it ain't a burnt piece or so, it's all good. You know, it ain't good cooking. Man, you tell me what it look like. You tell me. You know what I mean? Because it look, wow, <laughs> look good, you know what I mean? It's good. By the time to go in the house, everybody in there eating. I already know it's good, so it's gonna be gone. We about to go up in the crib, man. We about to go in the house. They gotta fill my belly before it get all eight. Deep within the trenches of the Land Shark defense are the Rushmen. Powerful and menacing. The men up front provide the strength and energy that makes the Ole Miss defense among the best in the nation. But it's their tenacity that sets them apart from the rest. A direct reflection of defensive line coach Chris Kiffin. 
contained through the beat. You were too shallow. That quarterback could have got out. Good. Ross, give him a look at two eyes. And start blocking him! Yes, sir. He takes great pride in not only the technique, but the energy that they play with, the conditioning that they're in. When your defensive line plays really well, you've got a chance. That, that defensive line room, I mean, that's kind of really the heart and soul of our defense. I think they have a, a unique chemistry in that room that, that lends to a lot of our success. Success is something the Rushmen have grown accustomed to. But only a few years ago, many doubted their ability to perform in the SEC. A lot of people don't know this, but we were ranked uh, 14 out of 14 teams on the defensive line uh, Kiff's first year. And uh, our first meeting, our very, very first meeting, uh, he put that up on the board and he said that, I promise you, he said, before this year is over, we're going to try to be one of the best D-lines in the SEC. And right now, I think we have the best D-line not only in the SEC, but in the country. I like those guys to uh, to know that nobody's going to outwork them. You know, we're going to put in that work every day. Nobody's going to outwork us. And, you know, when we bring it up and nobody's on the field and we break it down, we're the last ones to walk off the field. It's just a it's a, a great feeling for those guys to know that they put in a day's work. You know, you, you have to be you have to be in shape and you got to be able to chase the ball. And, and again, those guys, most of our guys, we're, we don't have the big heavy guy. Most of those guys are in shape and able to run. And that's kind of the way our defense is built with, with all, a lot of the movement and the slanting and the blitzing. And, and obviously chasing the ball, but I think I think it is competitive over there, and I think they all want to be at their best. And competition is what what creates that. Block out, good. Block out, good, DJ. Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa! The first day of pads, and that's what you want to do? My goodness! I don't even care if he stones you. Go bull rush. Good. <laughs> I hold him, baby. Where has everybody's hand placement been? No, not one person has hit it there. We're hitting the armpits right here on the rise. That's the chest, these are the armpits. Lock them out. All players are different, and you have to know what buttons to push. You have to know when to get on to a kid, when to pull back, and I think Coach Kiffin does a great job with that. He's able to, to put his arm around him, and, and they know where he's coming from, they know his heart, and he's able to coach him hard uh, at the same time. Good. Kiffin's benevolent demeanor likely stems from the time he spends with his own family, a behavior that's replicated within the Rebel football family. Well, that's what we want to be, all of our coaches, and, and their families are welcome here anytime because I believe that these young men need to see us in that role to give them an example of this is what it can be like, but it does take work and it takes a commitment, and um, so hopefully they see that in us. We are a family, it's a family atmosphere, and we tell the moms and dads and the student athletes that you're gonna see us around our families. We're gonna show your son the positive qualities of being a good husband and being a good father. It shows them how to, to take care of other people, to really care about somebody other than themselves. Certainly the players recognize what kind of man, what kind of father, you know, how his kids respond to him, how his wife responds to him, and uh, you've got to respect the kind of man that he is. I mean, uh, it's difficult to uh, coach all day long and then, you know, have your family too, and uh, there's a lot of irons in the fire right there, but. Uh, He's able to juggle it really well. He's a very good man. I think all these guys have a bright future. A lot of them are going to play on Sundays. Um, you know, and like we said, the, the best thing as a coach is to see these guys walk across the stage and get their degree. And, um, you know, in our room, I'm looking for 100% of those guys to do that and, and set themselves up for success the rest of their life. since I've been here is we want to be relevant. I want to tell you there wasn't a channel that I turned on today that didn't have something to say about you. 
the Ole Miss Rebels. And if I'm counting it right, and it looks right, it looks like about 102,000 came to see you tonight. We beat them last year, you experienced that, and tonight when you beat them on their own field, it'll be even sweeter, probably. So all we need to do now is let's just walk out of here, lock those gates behind us. Lock those gates and let's go pick a fight with these boys! It's time to play football. Noble is ready. Ole Miss and Alabama. And it's a nice high deep kick. It can be returned at the one. Taken by Drake. He comes to the middle of the field, the 10, the 15, upended and dropped. The ball's on the ground. The ball's on the ground. The Rebels claim they have it at the 17 yard line, and they do. Boom! That's a way to start it. Special team. Just ready. ready. That's how you start the game. I'm ready now. That's how you start ready now. Clayton waits for the snap. There it is. He fakes the handoff. Pressure right up the middle. He throws deep. It's long. That could be picked. Elston's got it at the 45. Trying to get around the man. He does. Now looking for blockers. Comes back to midfield. Down the near side to the 40. To the 35. He gets another big block. He's to the 30 and knocked out of bounds around the 27th. And the Rebels get another turnover out of the Crimson Tide. Boys in good field position. We just try to make turnovers. And if you get them on their side of the field, which really helps the offense, they only got to go like 50 yards in instead of like 80 or 70. When you're playing great teams and, and you can get takeaways that create extra possessions for you typically on short fields, it's, it's absolutely important that we convert it into points. Man in motion, there's the snap he gives to Wilkins around the right side, Alabama can't get to him, touchdown, Ole Miss! And I think they're thinking with that jumbo look, they're coming into the interior. They gotta guard us, remember that. They got to guard us, remember that. They got to stop us, remember that. It's what we do, it's not what they do, it's what we do. Stewart and Drake deep to receive this kick from Nathan Noble. And it's going to be right at the goal line and taken there. And the ball comes out. The Rebels say they have it. Did it come out before? Yes! Disaster for Alabama again. Oh, hey, they hit that boy. Man, that's him. Man, that's him. That's him. Third and goal from the four. Chad Kelly picking his way. He's running toward the far side. Dives. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Chad Kelly. Everything was inside, so I was like, oh. I tried to outrun dude, but he, I mean, that's a corner out there. It's hard to outrun corners, so I figured, hey, I need to get into the end zone. So made a move, uh, kind of jumped over the one guy. It was like, hey, I'm getting in. I'm not, I'm not going to be denied. So I was able to reach the ball across and score. As fast as the Ole Miss start was, no lead is safe on the road in the SEC. Senior transfer Jake Coker would take the tide on a methodical 15-play drive. With a healthy mixture of run and pass, the Alabama offense would finally clear the hurdles of a turnover-plagued first half. Hey, show your eyes! Look at the back of it! Coker looking far side, flips it to Mullaney, who leaps and hurdles for a touchdown! 75-yard drive, 540, and to the tide, stick with Coker from here on out. Hey, hey, are you having fun? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, now, how many of you like to make history? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Oh, legendary. Well, just know, you can be legendary today. You will never be forgotten, but let me tell you, it's going to take 30 minutes of absolute fight and doing your job over and over again, not somebody else's, yours. And when a play comes your way, make it, man. Make it. Three man now, four man front for Alabama. They bring up another one, the snap is high. Kelly grabs it, wants to throw, fires it up in the air. Treadwell can't get it. Deflection is caught! Deflection is caught! And down the sidelines is Adebojo. He's to the end zone. He's in there. Touchdown, Ole Miss. That was incredible. <laughs> God is great. God is very good. I just feel like it was it was God. It was God. It wasn't nothing but God. I was gonna throw it out right away, and the snap was kind of high, so I had to jump for it. I was like, man, there's got to be at least one over one because there's two guys over there. When I seen him throw the corn, there was two people. I was like, oh, corn's about to catch it. 
and the ball got tipped. You know, I didn't even see Quincy like, you know, on the side. All I seen was just like a flare, like he just knew to just automatically be there. He went up for the ball, and next thing you know, the ball's in front of me, and my eyes get big. I've seen pictures, my eyes was like, oh, I got a little cross-eyed. <laughs> the ball was right in front of me, and I just caught it and went from there. Oh my goodness! Kelly just threw it up. Fredwell had a play on it. And Adeborgio was just there in the perfect position. 66 yards. Yeah, there's no question. Hugh Freeze went immediately to Chad Kelly. Chad came to him. He was pointing himself, my bad. I really didn't see it. I mean, I was on the ground. There was like two two guys that had rolled on top of me, so I really didn't see it. All I seen is coach walk about 10 yards out in the field and say, come here. I went straight to Chad and said, God answers prayers and don't ever do that again. You know, you need the ball to bounce your way to have one of those uh, special seasons. Luckily, you know, thank God that one went our way. We knew it was going to be a 60-minute game. Uh, we knew they weren't going to quit. Coker keeps it. And picks his way to the end zone for a touchdown. So Alabama cuts it to 30 to 16 with a buck 33 to go in the third quarter. Four-man rush. He's in trouble and he's going to go down. He's sacked. Alabama defense is turning up the heat. There's the snap. Here comes the blitz. He's in trouble again and sacked again. And Alabama trying to spark their team via defense. Oker on the move. Fires short. Caught. Stewart. Touchdown. Walking in. Two quick strikes by Bama. And it's a one-score game. Hey, if you don't know, you got a battle for four quarters. Hey. Now you know. Now you know. The Rebels would have their 20-point lead diminish to just six and feel momentum moving back to the 100,000 houndstooth-clad fanatics. Chad Kelly in the gun, fakes it, going to keep and run right. Now throw down, field man wide open. He's got it to 50, down the sideline, score. Nobody's going to get him. He's in the end zone. Hey, stay in the moment. Stay in the moment. Hey, stay in the moment. Stay in the moment, bro. Third down and five. Here's a quick pass. Intercepted at the 35. He tried to get it O.J. Howard and C.J. Johnson dropped back in coverage and picked it off. Hey, that's a huge stop. Hey, you don't even know how big that stop is right there. You have no idea how big that stop is. But he threw it right to me. I had the running back. So I'm tracking the back, tracking the back. He pulled his hand off. I said, oh, he's going to throw it right Snap back to Kelly, fakes the handoff, wants to throw one-on-one -on -one with Treadwell. He's got it up there. Treadwell catches it. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Ole Miss, Laquan Treadwell. I, mean, I love to see big, strong receivers that are able to just go up and use their hands to take a football away from a defensive back. A 19-point deficit with 10 minutes to go would send many of the Tide faithful heading for the exits. But the number two team in the country had no plans of retreating. Touchdown, Alabama. Two-yard run for Henry with 6.36 to play. It's 43-30. to 30. Now the onside kick coming from Griffin. And here he goes, and he does kick it. It's going to bounce high in the air and tip down the field and still rolling on the ground. And Alabama thinks they have it at the 30. They tipped it far down the field, and Cam Sims chased it down, and Alabama has the football with 6.36 to go. Second and goal from the two. Coker's going to run to his right, throw toward the end zone. Got his man. Touchdown, Mullaney, who's had a huge second half. Threw a bullet to him from two yards out, and Alabama has got it back to a single score. In the final four and a half minutes of the game, possession would change hands four times, raising the level of nerve-wracking anxiety along the way. Tony Bridges' interception of a Jake Coker pass gave the Rebels hope that the roller coaster ride would soon be over. But a turnover on downs gave Bama the ball and a final shot at victory. Alabama has got to get 10 on this one to keep this drive alive. 16 seconds left, Ole Miss 43, Alabama 37. And there's the snap. He's looking. He's going to fire it downfield, and the pass is going to be incomplete. He dropped it, and the Rebels are going to win it, make it two years in a row, 43-37. 11th ranked Ole Miss knocks off number two, Alabama, and climbs to the top of the SEC West. What a game here in Tuscaloosa. Guess what? It ain't over yet because we got an ultimate goal. And that's to get to Atlanta. We coming. We just seen it. We made history. 
and it feels so great, man. We got a brotherhood that got each other's backs, baby, like we do. We can't be stopped. We're supposed to win these games, baby. Hey, celebrate the night. Throw in the trash tomorrow. Let's keep it moving, baby. We got, we got a natty to go get. I, I told you before the game, you have to be nothing but yourself. That's good because enough. Because that's good enough. That's good enough, coach. And we made it dip, more difficult than it had to be. But uh, you know what? We leave in Tuscaloosa. We leave in Tuscaloosa. What a game. It was uh, definitely a four-quarter battle. The great thing about it is we can improve so much from this, and hopefully we'll, we'll take all the positives from it and, um, and be excited about the win, but look at everything that we didn't do properly and, and, and get better for next week. If our team, they learn to put games behind them, the good and the bad, and the leadership in the locker room, demands that we prepare for the next task at hand, the next fight at hand, the next battle at hand, or if we look in the rear view mirror too long, we will wreck. We just have to be us, you know, if the coach puts us in predicaments to make plays, us wideouts, we have to, you know, go out there and make plays and, you know, it'll, it'll be a good game. A lot of guys will get to play and get better and, you know, we're just going to prepare like we've been preparing. You just have to have faith and, and trust in all the other guys that they're going to do their job. Can't wait to get back in the vault. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an epic weekend. Each Wednesday during the fall, tune in for a new episode of The Season. Also, don't forget to download the Rubble Rewards app for a chance to win exclusive prizes.